what's the current analytics market look like today? Uh, I'd like to maybe talk through a couple of resources and tools that you use and then like dive into really the, the importance of this open data structure that I guess we have with Web3. And I, I find that pretty interesting. Yeah. So zooming out, I think... Given the theme that we talked about a little bit earlier and sort of this vast expanse of long-tail tokens that you're seeing just generally in the market, you kind of are dealing with a primary trade-off in terms of current analytics tooling. I like to think of that as you can either have breadth, which I would say Dune is going for, or uh, like absolute quality control, which I would say when you look at tools, um, you know, particularly like token terminals, when that comes to mind, that's what they prioritize. And essentially what I mean by that is what every analytics team we've spoken to is primarily struggling with this is how do you kind of scale the amount of projects that you cover? Because all smart contracts are written slightly differently, dealing like with a lot of different categories. So if you want to get the important valuation multiples that people really care about, think like revenue, TVL, just kind of general volume that you're seeing, it's actually quite hard. I mean, you usually need to write um, basically like customized SQL and Dune or uh, kind of fork it and like tweak the code a little bit in terms of actually acquiring it from that specific smart contract. So... Mm-hmm. The interesting thing about Dune is, I would say it's like as much an analytics platform as it is social. You know what I mean? It's like you can kind of follow people that you really like. And I mean, one thing that's really good about it is it obviously prioritizes breadth. Like every project basically develops a Dune dashboard, but you do have to a certain extent adverse um, incentives in the sense that like you have a lot of teams that are writing their own SQL code and putting forth their own dashboard where like you're having users that might not be the most fluent in SQL kind of looking at them. So um, you don't really have like a quality control barrier there. Whereas like token terminals angle is much more like we're going to do everything in house, make sure that the data is entirely correct and just going to verify everything ourselves, which obviously takes a lot longer. Like that doesn't really scale very well. So yeah. I would say that's kind of the current landscape of analytics tooling we're dealing with. But what really excites me about it, and I think looking forward, why I think there's a very credible argument for more and more finance and just kind of general business should be done on chain is that you basically have these real-time data feeds of everything going on to the point where if you're looking at any DeFi protocol, every day and really every second you can monitor like their revenue, their general volume, their TVL, how many addresses are using it, which is a really powerful tool in terms of understanding what's going on from a fundamentals perspective looking at essentially, you know, a new type of business or protocol. Whereas yeah. if you look to most I, companies dealing with public equities, you obviously get these four snapshots. Go ahead. Yeah, I got this. I got another quote that I just got in front of me on the screen from one of your articles. And it's, you said, unlike TradFi, where the market gets four quarterly snapshots of a company's fundamentals based health, protocols can be constantly monitored. And at scale, these data flows can be more efficient and reduce the need for a guessing game of key indicators each quarter. And so... I'm I'm curious. Like, does this does this access to that 24/7 data feed? Is that help institutional investors more? Does it help retail investors more? Or I mean, or is it kind of still just for these this niche group of people who are really looking at the on-chain analytics? Because I I'd, I'd say like the people who are actually doing that day-to-day you know data scraping or an, an analysis yeah. is probably a, a small percentage of traders. Yeah, really good question. Um, I would say institutions are always advantaged. <laughs> I mean, they just have kind of the resources, usually like an entire floor of data engineers uh, that are just kind of building out, you know, uh, proprietary infrastructure for how they actually go about uh, piping the data, different Excel sheets, looking through it. So like in that sense, I would say they always do just have a little bit of the upper hand. That being said, I think from the perspective of retail, it very much like reduces the barriers where, you know, anyone can sign up for a Dune account and it's free. I mean, it's public, but you don't need to rely on like, you know, a Bloomberg terminal or any kind of like advanced tooling. You'd usually need to dig through a lot of the sell side reports and what you get in TradFi. And what I find most interesting about the perspective is like in my opinion, in my opinion, there's actually a very credible argument that in the long run, kind of like I said before, more and more finance and business will be done on chain. I think purely from the normative perspective, it makes sense that, you know, you get these constant snapshots. It makes sense that you have kind of a real time look into companies that are usually black boxes. But I actually think purely when you look at it from a cost production perspective, you're basically automating away uh, certain segments of investor relations, right? Like no more kind of like quarterly presentation, SEC filings. It's like you can kind of just pipe that data directly into anyone that's looking for it. So, yeah, it's I think like. The idea of real-time data on a public database is just very exciting in terms of like the major advantages you get for that in finance. 
Yeah. Is there a good first project that, I mean, maybe, and this is one that, you know, there's a dashboard out there already and that's okay, but is there a good first project you might recommend someone looking to make their first Dune dashboard or... I don't know if there's resources. I haven't looked into it too much myself, but I'd love to make a, a dashboard, even if it's a simple one. I mean, I'm sure there. I'm sure I could pull like an unstoppable domains smart contract address and and make a dashboard around like minted domains or something like that. Yeah, really good question. Um, I would definitely check out the R Network Learn course. Um, that's definitely one of the resources that I found most helpful in yeah. terms of a first dashboard. I the Dex trades abstraction. Is really easy to play with, I would say. That's a good one if you just want to query, you know, any sort of volume on a major DEX and just kind of get an idea of what's going on under the hood there. I think that's you know a relatively straightforward one to play around with at first. Yeah, and that our date our network, um, that's the the data thirty for thirty course you're talking about. Yep. And that actually goes does that actually go through like um, you know, here's does that share SQL code or um, yeah. am I going to walk away from that YouTube course actually having created a dashboard? Yeah. I mean, essentially the way the course works is internally there was a cohort that they had of a bunch of different data scientists. They were training in SQL. So the idea was you had some degree of familiarity at first, but um, I mean, they really kind of, to a certain extent, start from the ground. And there are dashboards that you can kind of create along with the course and that the instructors are I mean, it's Dune, it's completely public, and that you yeah. can look at to check yourself, or you can kind of just watch as a resource and try to toy around on your own, but definitely a very good one. You're listening to The Unstoppable Podcast, the go-to place for everyone to learn about the latest innovations in Web3, NFTs, and the decentralized web. Welcome to the Metaverse.